Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to work on a lot of uh, my items in the store that need uh, some paint. And so um, I had all these little farm animal wall hooks and I've sold them for years and they sell really well, but lately they've slowed down some. And I'm thinking that they just need a good paint job. So, uh, actually, my sister mentioned that we might should do some of these. And I thought it was a great idea. So, uh, I started out by giving them two coats of the color buttercream. And uh, this is chalk paint. It is a Dixie Belle chalk paint. Um, and if you paint and then uh, just let it dry well to the touch then uh, you can just take a wet cloth or a damp cloth and uh, wipe it with some pressure and you'll get plenty of distress. Well, these sat over the weekend and not only did the wet cloth not work, but uh, even sanding them with sandpaper without giving them uh, much pressure and I didn't want to do that because then it would go down to the shiny metal. Uh, it didn't work well. So what I end up having to do is trying to reactivate the chalk paint because like I said, I just let them cure too long. And uh, that just kind of shows you uh, that chalk paint, if you let it go long enough, well, uh, someone mentioned uh, in the comments the other day that it would uh, seal itself after a while and it almost has. It's just really, really difficult to get the distress on it. And even now, I let these sit uh, for maybe five minutes in the water and um, I'm still having to use quite a bit of pressure. So I learned in doing this that the longer that I let them sit in there, the better it worked. So as you can see, I'm getting quite a bit of distress here, but I'm really having to use some elbow grease on it. So um, this video is gonna be just mainly painting some uh, items, items like this and then a couple others. Um, I find that this time of year, um, in trying to bring some of the spring decor in, that uh, having a lot of items that are that are really light and neutral uh, will help some of your other spring items pop, if that makes sense. So I like to really bring in some light colors and uh, to mix in with my spring colors. And I think this buttercream works really well because um, it's it's a shade of white, but it has enough warmth in it uh, that it just kind of works well with any color. So if you wonder um, when you're trying to set up your booths um, why you can't uh, get that spring look as easily, just try adding a little of... Um, a little of a soft white and uh, like I said that will make your items pop more and also lighten up your vignette and as you can see here I really uh, got a big chunk out of this one and I had let it set a while and maybe too big of a chunk but uh, I didn't mind it and then it's funny because this uh, this pig here uh, I really, really had to work to get any distress at all on it. So, um, I don't know why some will uh, come off easier than others. But, like I said, this is one that I really struggled to get enough distress on. Now, I'm anxious to see how well these do after um, painting so many of them. And I've been thought about painting some different colors. But, uh, I really feel like this will sell better than actually putting colors on them. I do have some um, some cast iron figurines that I will add some other colors to, and I'll do that on another video. 
but it's a good time to get these light items in because I'm really sprucing up and painting, uh, repainting different areas in the store. Most of them, I'm just freshening the color that's already there. Uh, but my she shed, or what we call the she shack, um, is, um, it was a distressed blue, and now uh, we've painted it pink. So uh, that was my sister's idea also, and I loved it because it's such a shabby chic color. So uh, these will, ha these will uh, look good on the outside of that uh, she shed. So always keep in mind when you're thrifting uh, or even yard selling, when we get some yard sale weather, uh, to uh, always watch for figurines, especially when they're a type of material that will paint well. Uh, and, you know, maybe they're really dated looking, but um, just putting a fresh coat of paint and painting them a solid color will really update them. And uh, especially some of the animal figurines are really good to work into your spring vignettes. As you can see on some of these, I got a lot of distress, some not so much, but uh, that just kind of gives them different looks and I'm okay with that. But um, I do generally like a lot of distress on items like this. And uh, for the most part, I was able to get that. And what I do when I, uh, when I screw these to the wall is I take just a little bit of that buttercream on my fingertip and just kind of dab it over the top of, this, of the screw and that makes it blend well and still gives it a distressed look. Now this little rooster um, my sister gave me and um, I right away knew I wanted to get rid of that color, so I painted it. I just spray painted it with some uh, with a satin finish black, and uh, now I'm going to give this two coats of the color buttercream. And I started out here with just a regular cotton white, and decided pretty soon after that I wanted to uh, paint it uh, the buttercream also. And if you've watched me long, you know that I love the color buttercream. It's just uh, such a versatile white. Uh, and I, I really like white. White is actually my favorite color. And, um, but uh, I like the buttercream more than just using just regular white. Now, I painted this black first for a couple of reasons. One is it evened out the color so that, that the white would go over it more evenly. Uh, but the main reason that I paint, uh, that I'm painting this underneath is so that when I go to wet distress, which I will be with this one, uh, then um, it will have that dark color underneath so that I'll have plenty of that dark uh, showing through. So once I got this covered with the second coat and uh, let it dry well, not overnight uh, like I did the other items, but uh, just let it dry well to the touch. Then I just took a damp cloth and, uh, and did my distressing that way. And because uh, the paint that I used as my first coat or my uh, bottom coat was, um, was a spray paint, it wasn't wa water soluble like the chalk paint is. So when you wet that chalk paint and you reactivate it, it will rub right off if you don't let it dry long enough that it really cures well. As you can see, I got plenty of distress just wiping it with that damp cloth. Now, I didn't mention that with all of these, um, I sprayed them with a clear matte finish uh, just to uh, seal that chalk paint in. And now, uh, this is a, uh, I don't know if it was chalk or bisque or what it was, uh, but it kind of has some weight on it, uh, and because it's this dull, um, 
textured finish uh, with no um, with no glaze on it. This one coat uh, of the buttercream covered it really well. And uh, again, this was one that I let dry overnight. And um, because of that, again, I struggled to get my distress on it. So, and another problem that I had with this one is um, I probably should have spray painted it black first also because then I would have had more color to distress down to. So, because I didn't do that, um, then I ended up having to, uh, to make some more fake distress, if that makes sense, because what I ended up having to do was take a black marker and just add some on and then after i added some on with the black marker here and there then i still took my sandpaper and just sanded it down so that i got some more more of a natural distress so here i am with that damp cloth trying to get some of that uh, darker to show through and like I said I could tell right away I wasn't going to be able to so I took my sanding sponge tried some more again uh, it, it just didn't work well so then I resorted to uh, to just drawing that on and I do that um, a lot of times the only problem with that is it's really hard to get a natural looking distress so uh, you just have to do the best that you can and then in this case i i just took my sandpaper and sanded some more on it and um to make it more uh, or less prominent rather and i'm just kind of trying to dab it over some of the high spots and just get as much of a natural look as i can and then I, I think at some point I moved to a uh, to a larger marker, and um, that made it a little bit easier to distress. And I'm really going for an old look on this one, and I almost added some uh, some brown wax to this, but just decided I didn't want it to take away from the white color. Um, but uh, just sanding it and, and the marker together uh, gave it more of an aged look. So I ended up not really having to do that. And I'm just kind of trying to add some pretty heavy distress here because I know that I'm not going to be keeping all of it. And uh, the sandpaper will take a lot of it off. So this larger marker really helped. The biggest thing that I, need, I just had to make sure that that marker was dry well before I went over it with the sandpaper because I didn't want it to look muddy. And um, I ended up taking a lot of this off, but like I said, it gave me a lot more of a natural distress. And then of course, when this one was finished, I had to go over it also with a clear matte spray paint. I could have used a uh, clear wax or a brush on clear coat of some kind, but um, it was just easy. The weather was decent enough that I could take all these outside and just spray paint them all together. It was just a lot quicker. I know that this was kind of a quick video, but like I said, I just had all these items that I really needed to paint. I still have several more, but um but these i really needed to get some of these out for spring and it just doesn't make any sense to do just a few so i just had to make this a video since i had so many of them to do but i hope you guys enjoy this video and i hope to see you in the next thank you so much for watching have a great evening and god bless you and your family